Hello, and welcome to another edition of Sree's Sunday New York Times Read Along. It's the first show of 2023. Happy New Year's to everyone. We are live on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and our Digimenters website. Tanner Curtis is our guest. He's a photo editor at the New York Times, usually with the style section, but over the last three months, he was co-editor of the Year in Pictures. We'll be focusing on the Year in Pictures and on the New York Times style section. My name is Neil Parek. Aloha, everyone. My, I'm the uh, executive producer and occasional guest host of uh, Sri Sunday New York Times Read Along. And it is, I'm so glad to be with you again after a few, several weeks with the holidays. Uh, as you might uh, notice, I've got the Aloha shirt on. I've got some pictures on the wall behind me. This is from our trip to Maui in uh, November. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, a little later in the show. Uh, but before we go uh, uh, much further, I wanted to give you a little bit of a preview of what's to come in today's show. Happy New Year! This week, our New York Times read-along guest is Tanner Curtis, photo editor at the New York Times. He's an editor with the Style section and served as co-editor for the 2022 Year in Pictures. The Year in Pictures was in the January 1st print edition of the Sunday New York Times. Neil Parekh will be the guest host. From the story behind the story, written by Terence McGinley. In September, the New York Times' photo editors, Jeffrey Henson Scales and Tanner Curtis, broke from their regular jobs to work on The Year in Pictures, a review of news photography that The Times publishes every year. Photographers with The Times file 10,000 to 15,000 pictures a month. Mr. Scales and Mr. Curtis looked at nearly all of them. Going one quarter of the year at a time, they pulled 500 to 700 pictures for each month. Then they called those groups down to 100. That's when the hardest part starts, Mr. Curtis said. You have to think about which news events are important, which pictures are most important, which pictures are most interesting, which pictures are most representative of the New York Times' body of work. Tanner Curtis will be our guest. In addition to the year in pictures, we'll also get his insights on this week's style section. Sri Srinivasan is our host. I am the executive producer and occasional guest host, Neil Parekh. Paula Kiger helps produce the show, engaging with the audience on Facebook and LinkedIn. The show is produced by Digimenters. We produce high-quality virtual and hybrid events for organizations big and small around the world. We also do social and digital consulting, training, and workshops. Again, Tanner Curtis is our guest. He's a photo editor at the New York Times and was co-editor of the 2022 Year in Pictures. Live on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and our Digimenters website. That's a bit of a preview of what's to come. We certainly want to uh, welcome some of the folks who are watching us today. Uh, Dr. Sujana Chandrasekhar, uh, thank you uh, for the uh, uh, fab shirt comment. Uh, aloha as well. Uh, Patricia Freudenberg is saying Happy New Year 2023. Patricia, thank you as always for joining us. Uh, Jonathan, as always, greetings from uh, offering greetings from the East Village. Uh, thank you, uh, Jonathan. Uh, Doug Levy is watching from a rainy Northern California. Uh, we've seen the videos of how uh, how much rain is coming down there. Um, uh, Doug, hopefully you're staying safe. I've seen some flooding. I know our friend uh, Diana uh, Rahini uh, has posted um, some some video. I think her the school was flooded there. So we're certainly uh, thinking of you. Um, <laughs> My mom is watching uh, from uh, Florida, actually, not from our home, my hometown of Hastings on Hudson. Uh, she's asking if I'm still in Hawaii. I'm still in a, a Hawaii state of mind, if you will. Um, I, I I put on the shirt 
uh, because as you can see, I finally put the pictures up from our November trip uh, behind uh, behind me. And uh, I also put up a website, neilparek.org, uh, uh, which you can see if you go uh, neilparek.org, you'll see uh, several uh, photo galleries from Maui. And I finally shared some on social media. So I'm, I, yes, I am in a Hawaii state of mind, mom, and uh, definitely uh, still thinking about uh, that incredible trip. Um, Paula Kiger is watching from Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, Paula is one of our, is, is producing on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, sharing links to articles and engaging with the audience. Thank you, Paula. Miriam Berkeley is watching from Hell's Kitchen and wishing us a happy new year. And our friend Stefan Kaplan, um, he's excited about today's uh, year, uh, our focus on the year in pictures. He eagerly awaits it. Um, he's offering, uh, saying a good morning to everyone. Now, we will be talking about the year in pictures shortly. I just want to mention that the year in pictures was in print on uh, New Year's Day, January 1st. Uh, we certainly didn't have a show on New Year's and Christmas. We took the uh, two Sundays off uh, for the holidays. Uh, but we're so glad that Tanner Curtis, one of the co-editors of that uh, special uh, package, is joining us today to talk about uh, the year in picture. So we'll we'll look forward to that. Um, Doug gives us a quick uh, um, update. It's wet, but so far his area is okay. Uh, but it's worth in Sonoma, worse in Sonoma County. Uh, thank you, Doug. Appreciate you sharing that. And and everyone, we encourage you to be like. Uh, Sujana, be like Dr. Chandrasekhar, tag your friends, let them know uh, that there's a great show uh, that they might be interested in, that they might want to, to watch. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to go to the paper um, and uh, check out what uh, is in there. We'll, we'll kind of walk you through the different sections and then uh, come back and have Tanner Curtis join us. So the front page uh, and certainly, and Tanner's going to talk us through some of the photos as well, because before he joined the Styles desk, he was uh, covering a lot of national news. Um, it's the, uh, the, the, the speaker's um, uh, fight over the last uh, several uh, days. 15 votes it took to get a speaker, and that's the display photo as well as the, the lead. Um, the headline here is, through line from Gingrich to Gates, combat, not compromise. And um, you know, McCarthy's deal for gavel raises fear on debt limit. Private negotiations play out in public. Speaker could face shutdown fight. Below the fold, uh, and this is a very uh, um, you know, important article you'll want to take a look at later, Animal Sedative Puts New Peril in Street Drugs. The uh, caption, bandages on Brooke Petter's arm cover the ravages caused by, uh, and I can't pronounce it, Zy xylazine, an animal tranquilizer being added to fentanyl. Um, in grayer Asia, retired means ever more work. And on the right-hand side, she showed a prophet's image and divided a college campus. This is um, Erica Lopez Prater, an adjunct professor at Hamline University. Um, so we'll take a look at that later. That's the, the front page. Um, this is the year in pictures, uh, which we um, will get into with Tanner. This is a special section that was in the Sunday, January 1st print edition. Um, you'll see this photo when we get to it. Uh, this photo is a wraparound cover. If you go to our website, you'll see both a gift link to the online version and a PDF of the um, year in pictures. So definitely encourage you to check that out. Sunday Styles, uh, where Tanner works. Uh, is uh, the the next section that we'll take a look at uh, this cover picture, uh, and we'll show that to you. Southern California moves in. Um, that's a palm tree in Manhattan. A really interesting angle on the photo, um, or it's a photo illustration rather. Um, a Los Angeles vibe is in the air all around New York City. Um, and then the at the bottom of the fold, how we welcome the new year. Writers around the world describe the activities they took part in to kick off 2023. So we'll definitely take a look at that. And then Sunday opinion, uh, here and queer in Alabama. Uh, I went to the deep South to understand where our country's 
anti-gay uh, backlash looks like on the ground and what it really means to fight back. Uh, so that's a really interesting uh, article. I saw that on social media over the last uh, few days. Sunday Business, Facebook's Bridge to Nowhere. The tech giant put money and brains behind easing traffic in its backyard. Then it gave up. And here's an interesting uh, article we'll definitely want to spend some time with uh, and talk to Tanner about. A 20-year-old camera is Gen Z's hottest gadget. Why young people are opting for point-and-shoots and and blurry photos. Um, I can understand point-and-shoots. I don't understand blurry photos. It's the Oscars. Uh, The arts and leisure section uh, is focusing on uh, the Oscars, Michelle Williams goes big. Oscar-nominated actress is taking on larger-than-life roles in movies like The Fablemans, and she is reaping the rewards. Um, there are several other articles, uh, and a piece by A.O. Scott, How a Master Class at Juilliard Became One of the Most Talked-About Scenes in Tar. So that's the arts and leisure. Another arts and leisure section, uh, more regular, this is ideas and personalities. No two bodies move the same way. Katya Heitman's dance work collects the poetry in how people stand, walk, hug, kiss, fidget, and make other everyday gestures. And so that's the full picture below the fold, as you can see. We have the book review, Taking Liberties, uh, Freedom's Dominion by Jefferson Cowie, uh, if I pronounce that right, traces the association between the rhetoric of independence in an Alabama county and the politics of white supremacy. And the magazine section. This is what we'll do, what we do while we're waiting for the world to change. Lessons from one doctor's long crusade to care for Boston's homeless. Um, it certainly is interesting. One thing I want to note about the, the way the paper came to me this morning is the second part of the A book was at the very end. So as you as you might know, if you watch uh, regularly, um, usually what happens in New York, the printing press at College Point can print all 40 uh, plus pages in one uh, section. The New York Times is actually printed uh, when I get it in Washington, D.C. When I was in Seattle, it's printed by printing presses at other newspapers, the Seattle Times, the Washington Post. And uh, the A book gets split up. And sometimes they're intentional about what they put on page uh, 21 where the split happens. Uh, What's interesting, though, is instead of coming like this, as it usually does, it usually comes like right after the A book. This time, this kind of extra section was all the way in the back, uh, all the way behind uh, the paper. But that is what we have in uh, today's uh, paper. uh, And uh, we're going to... uh, bring on Tanner and talk about the year in pictures in just a moment. Again, our guest is Tanner Curtis. He is a photo editor at the New York Times, usually on the styles desk, but for the last three months, he was working on the year in pictures. Welcome Tanner to the show. Great to be with you this morning, Neil. Tanner, thank you so much for getting up. Uh, and joining us early on a Sunday morning. Uh, if you weren't with us Sunday, what would you be doing uh, right about now? Um, I'd probably be waking up right about now and just starting my coffee for the day yeah. um, and uh, sitting with my cat on the couch uh, reading a book. Just just hanging out? Just hanging um, out. It's a nice time. We have a few, other fo- a few more folks who have joined us uh, since we did our roll call. So I just want to bring in Gunter uh, Baylor is watching from Vienna, Austria. Uh, we do have an international audience that joins us for this show. Um, closer to home, where I am in Washington, D.C., I'm in Springfield, Virginia. Pradnia Haldapur is watching from Silver Spring, Maryland. Thank you, Pradnia. Um, we have uh, Deborah Kerr watching from Fort Lauderdale. Uh, Deborah, thank you. Um, and those are some great uh, pictures you've been sharing on Facebook. I'm, I'm always, always up for seeing uh, good pictures. Thank you. Um, Stefan is sharing a comment on LinkedIn as well. So he's, he's in Facebook and LinkedIn. The year in pictures online is amazing. Uh, although digital subscriber must always have the section in hand, get a print section whenever possible. Absolutely. Uh, and to that point, uh, Paula reminded folks that the gift link and the PDF are available on our website 
for the show. So if you want to take a look at how it's laid out in print, again, online is great too, but we like showing what print looks like. Linda Lawrence is watching from Long Island. Um, Lisa Curtis uh, is watching. Hi from Tanner's mom and dad in Kentucky. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> surreal. <laughs> it's, it is always surreal. Thank you so much, uh, mom and dad, for watching. Uh, we're looking forward to any insights you have on Tanner as a young boy. Feel free to share uh, if you, um, you know, <laughs> if it's, if I, I may not put it on the air if it's too, too much, uh, but uh, if we can embarrass Tanner just a little bit, uh, see if you can help us out. Just, just a little, not too much. <laughs> My mom watches as well, Tanner. So, you know, I'm, I'm always uh, open for, for that. Um, and uh, uh, let's see um, who else. And, uh, oh, my uh, proud thing I was asking where she is in Kentucky. She lived in Lexington for 10 years. So they're already connecting. You're already having your parents uh, connect. My mom is friends with most of the people who watch the show now. So it's all good. Um, my folks are in Lexington. So there we go. There we go. And Ken Fisher is watching from Cedar Rapids, uh, Iowa. So thank you, Ken. Um, so Tanner, tell us about the year in pictures. You, you know, you, you're on the styles desk uh, and, and we can talk a little bit more about your career uh, before that as well. But when do you start working on the year in pictures? When, you know, this is not your, your regular gig. When did you you know, kind of first get the call or first get the inquiry, hey, uh, we'd like you to work on this. Well, uh, this is my second year working on the Year in Pictures uh, collection. Uh, 2021 was my first uh, time through it. Uh, I got asked by our director of photography, um, Megan Lorem, uh, sometime in the mid to late summer of 2021, if I'd be interested in, in working on it, which I, you know, enthusiastically replied, yes. Um, and then uh, Jeffrey Henson Scales uh, and I kind of began work on it, um, I, I believe, in September sometime last year. And um, the same is true for, for this year. We tend to get started by late September because the process of going through all the images that the New York Times publishes each year is, is a daunting one and, and takes quite a bit of uh, searching and refining and, and researching and re-refining uh, over, over the course of those, uh, those three months that you mentioned at the start. And how many uh, pictures do you go through to figure out um, what's going to be in the final, uh, final copy? Um, the short answer is it's well in the hundreds of thousands, I would say. Um, hundreds of thousands. Wow. Hundreds of thousands, yes. Um, it varies certainly a little bit each year, but what I've found in, in the last two years of working on this, um, we usually begin our search. Uh, we, we search each by uh, month by month, uh, and what I have usually found is that the Times publishes anywhere between ten and 15,000 images each month. Um, and that includes uh, photos made on assignment for the Times by staff and freelance photographers. It includes uh, images coming from the news wires and uh, services like Getty Images and Reuters and, and the AP. Uh, it also includes, um, you know, film stills from, you know, movies, movie reviews, um, some illustrations. It's, it kind of all is lumped in there together, but we, we publish a great deal um, each, each month of the Times. Um, so we kind of begin by by looking at as much as we can um, and kind of through going, going through that like mass volume of, of imagery, you, you kind of realize really quickly what is going to rise from, uh, you yeah, know, rise to the top. Now we'll take a look at the, the section in just a minute, but when you uh, uh, start the process, do you, are, are you starting with a blank slate or do you go into it with, okay, we know we've been watching some of these pictures come through over the year we know we want to focus on X, Y, or Z. Like, you know, we know, for example, that we'll see a huge focus on Ukraine, understandably. Did you, was that part of your thinking even before you started looking at the pictures? Yes. Um, I think we, we definitely go in with uh, a sense of what some of the biggest stories uh, of the year are. And, and certainly this year, we, we knew from the get-go that we would have a prominent uh display of, of our imagery from Ukraine, where we've had, uh, I think, a group of 10 or 12, if not more, photographers kind of cycling through uh, the country covering, uh, you know, that war throughout 2022. 
Um, so we knew we wanted to really drill down specifically into, into Ukraine and, and all the wonderful coverage that the international uh, desk has done there. Um, but otherwise, we, you know, we try to keep an open mind and kind of some of the, the most exciting images to me that make the cut are the ones that you, you know, you find through happenstance or that just kind of seemingly come out of nowhere. Absolutely. Um, Stefan is uh, sharing that Megan uh, is a phenomenal director of photography. Stefan worked at the New York Times for a number of years as a photo editor um, and is really great. You should follow him on all channels at Spin It Social. Um, and Stefan, thanks you again for, for your insights. And we'll start with uh, Stefan's comment and go right to the, uh, um, to the section. It opens up powerfully with a full wrap photo of the devastation from Ukraine, um, from the invasion of Ukraine, uh, and love how the decision was made to run a double truck image. We'll ask you about some of the language, some of the sure. lingo in, in a moment, um, showing the beauty and resilience of the Ukrainian people by highlighting their passion and love for the arts. So let's go ahead and do that. I will um, take myself off camera so I can uh, focus on the paper. Uh, and we will um, we will go through the the images as uh, Stefan was mentioning them. Let's uh, do that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, going with the handheld camera, so we have a little bit more flexibility. Um, we have this gives you a better sense of the of the section when you open it up. <coughs> you see, it's a full page image. We're gonna go. It's the wraparound cover. Yes. It's hard to hard to open with one hand. I will uh, <laughs> tell yes. you that, but um, but that gives you a sense. It's a tab. It's it's a regular section uh, size, but when you open it up, it's uh, this nice uh, full wraparound. What can Which you tell us about choosing the the front um, the, the cover photo? Well, it's always it's always one of the hardest parts of the process uh, for print, especially when we're trying to. Um, consider something for a wraparound because as you'll notice, you know, it's uh, it has great impact when you open it, but when you first see it, you see it, you know, as a quarter of the image and then as a half of the image split vertically. Yeah. So the, you know, there's a lot of pressure on, you know, different portions of that image to be, you know, very compelling. So we wanted to, we wanted to look as great as a, you know, vertical cover as it does as a full wraparound. And I think this Daniel Barahulak image um, from April, really succeeds in that. And it, you know, gives us a lot of space, um, gives us some space clear, you know, obviously for the the type that's essential for, um, mm -hmm. for the cover, um, but also that wraparound gives this image the scale it really needs to, I think, have the maximum impact and, and get at the sense of destruction that has happened in these uh, villages. And that's, and that's a really interesting point, you know, not just the, the space you need for text, uh, which is which is important, but then thinking about what what kind of picture would work well in a in a top right quadrant, if effectively, mm -hmm. I mean that it looks good right like that, but then also looks good as a front page, right? <clears throat> and it's a challenge, and it, it took it took quite a bit of you know I mean we as we go through the process, we will kind of gather images that we think could make strong covers and. You come to realize quickly some images that look good, you know, in our you know editing interface, you know, as full frames. Once you put them on the page in the cover kind of you know, template, you're like, oh, this is this is actually much more challenging, <laughs> or this doesn't work quite as well as we uh, would have hoped. So it, we kind of went back to the drawing board a lot on on the cover this year. But I'm you know again I'm extremely happy with where we landed with this with this uh, picture by Daniel Barahulak. And uh, Patricia has a question. I'm not going to ask you to answer it just yet, um, but do you have a personal favorite? So keep that in mind uh, for later. We'll get back to that. Um, but I want to give you a chance to think through that. Thanks. Um, but she does also uh, ask, do you edit, uh, how much editing do you do on the photos themselves? Um, what's, where's that line between photojournalism and, you know, getting the picture just right? Well, we have very, you know, we have very stringent standards on on ethics uh, at the Times, as I'm sure you know, you and, and your viewers are, are are well aware. Um, and that that translates to photography as well, especially with our news photography. I mean, we we do allow the photographers to kind of you know handle their own imaging, um, you know, and toning decisions. But the 
the kind of strictest uh, guideline we have is that nothing can be added or removed uh, from the image, uh, you know, there's no altering of the scene um, outside of the traditional kind of, you know, cropping. Um, so uh, in terms of kind of editing the, you know, the colors of the pictures, um, I'll, you know, I'll say there's a lot of that that goes on for the print section just to make sure that things replicate in the, the right way. We want it to look as good um, in the newsprint as it does on our screen. Um, and I have to, you know, really tip the hat to um, uh, not only, uh, our great art production team at the times, but um, but also Jeffrey Henson Scales, my co-editor, who uh, just really has a, a top-notch eye for uh, for making sure those uh, productions are, are as uh, sharp as they can be. Absolutely. Uh, so here we are. We've we've turned the page now, um, literally, uh, um, to the inside. This is the image I think Stefan was referring to, going from that uh, cover. Of Ukraine to this, um, using this picture is from June fifteenth. Odessa, Ukraine, school graduates danced by the opera and ballet theater, defying Russia's aggression. The Odessa Opera staged a performance for the first time since the invasion began. Um, this goes with the uh, uh, opening essay by the executive editor Joseph Kahn, uh, with the headline "Anguish and Optimism in a Year of Images." Um, again, this was this was a choice that this picture goes with the uh, essay. Mm -hmm. um, can you walk us through that? Sure. Um, I mean, I think one of our goals with this image being on the you know kind of the opening spread after that you know devastating wraparound cover is we we wanted to kind of give a contrast in moods and show that yes, while there's been great devastation and destruction throughout Ukraine, there's still a very uh, you know rich life that's going on in a, in a life full of culture. And we thought this image by Letitia Van Kahn, uh captured that very well by, you know, showing this, you know, very beautiful scene of a, uh, of a, of a dance rehearsal. Um, but, you know, there's, they're clearly set behind uh, a row of sandbags. So the kind of, you know, the looming nature of the, of the war and the ever present nature of the war is still, you know, very much there. And I, and I think at that, at this scale, it, it again, it really, um, that contrast lands, I hope, I think. A absolutely, absolutely. Um, Stefan has a really great um, question, comment and question going back to the, the, the cover photo um, that it's, uh, he's thankful for not being there in the middle of a war zone and, and we want to hats off to all of the photographers and reporters who uh, brought us these wonderful images and the stories um, from, uh, from their, um, but he's asking whether, do you know if Daniel was using a drone um, to get this photo? Uh, possible in a war zone? Um, what's... Um, I don't, you know, I, I, I believe so in this case. Um, as, as Stefan points out, there's, you know, there's not much left standing to kind of get this vantage point. Mm -hmm. um, and we've certainly used drones in different uh, portions of our Ukraine coverage, but uh, yeah, drone. We we have a lot of photographers who work with uh, drones these days, and uh, they kind of bring their own set of logistical hurdles and, and complications. But they often produce you know really outstanding results. Sure, sure. So as we flip through, uh, you know, when we when we get past this is a January February page, um, and I'm just going to sneak uh, around the corner. So mm -hmm. a couple pages for January February. Um, right. you know, what, what stands out for you on this page? I mean, there's any, there's any number of places we can go. Oh gosh. Um, okay. it's um, challenging. <laughs> Burkina Faso, Af Afghanistan here on the, on the left, um, Vietnam, <coughs> Syria, and then, um, Kazakhstan. Right. Um, and oops, sorry, I'll, uh, I'll say this. The, the testament that these pictures from very different, the, the fact that these pictures from very different parts of the world and the cover of very different subject matters all work together on the same uh, print spread is is a testament to the great work that our you know uh, print team uh, for the section Mary Jane Callister and Felicia Vasquez um, do. I mean, it's just, it's amazing how they can get these scenes to work together. Um, I mean. And it may be pointing to one of the lighter pictures on the page, but the image from uh, 
from Vietnam is is one of my favorites on this on this spread, um, and it kind of highlights that unexpected nature of the of images that kind of you know come up in this year in pictures search. You know, we definitely were not doing a kind of targeted search for um, you know dragon fruit farming, um, <laughs> but uh, as we as you go through all the published images, uh, scenes like this can really rise up, and and as we kind of go through that refinement. Um, you know, process it, you know, it's, it's impact kind of becomes ever more, you know, even more apparent and we, you know, want to include it even more. It's, and it, you know, can, can add a moment of, uh, you know, a much needed moment of levity in some of the heavier, you know, stories that we cover. Um, and Stefan's comment that that picture is outstanding and stunning um, by Lynn Pham. Absolutely. Um, and I do want to mention uh, he also, when we were talking about the, uh, War photography, <coughs> Lindsay Adario and Tyler Hicks in particular have been incredible. Um, I actually, I, I have followed Lindsay's, excuse me, Lindsay's career <clears throat> over the years. I actually bumped into her uh, at an event in India 20 wow. years ago or so, even maybe even longer, 22 years ago, very randomly. Um, hmm. Never, you know, we didn't, it, it, it was just, passing through we were both taking pictures um and uh, but then i've kind of watched her career since then which is really really cool she's yeah she's a really excellent photographer as is as is tyler and you know a lot of their work is represented throughout here so when you have where where the way you talked about how you selected the pictures you looked at kind of month by month um was there and i haven't you know done a study i i, I can't I assume that you did this the same way last year in terms of a, a monthly look, but has there ever been a, any thought of organizing the photos differently, not going chronologically, but looking at themes um, hmm. you know, across the year? That's a that's a great question. Um, I mean, we certainly have talked about it. Um, we talked about this year in particular with Ukraine because we knew it would play such an outsized role in the edit. Um, and so we talked about any number of solutions to that, you know, ranging from, you know, almost a separate Ukraine focused insert um, mm -hmm. that, you know, would, you know, only show that imagery and kind of let the other stories from the year kind of, uh, you know, have their own space to, um, you know, kind of just kind of more cleaving it off within the same section. But, you sure. know, I, I think uh, part of what part of what is interesting about looking at the year through uh, photography is kind of seeing the overlapping of events and topics and seeing how storylines play out throughout the year. So I think even though we kind of, we are loose with our chronology, I think a little bit, as you'll notice in the headers, there are sometimes two or three months represented at the top of the page. Um, it's still, you know, we want to show kind of the breadth of the stories we cover and the breadth of, you know, the range of photography through the year where I don't think you would necessarily get that same, um, effect if we were to group things a little more topically together uh, overall. But you did have these call-outs for Ukraine. So we did yeah. January, February, right? And mm -hmm. then now we have a, a two-page spread with a black uh, bar across the top that is just Ukraine in a flash, war steals, uh, quiet lives, and homes. Yes, so this was kind of our ultimate, um, you know, this is our like you know our solution that we came to with uh, the Ukraine imagery this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we wanted we basically decided that there should be some kind of tent poles in the section that you know give uh, you know that very clearly signify to the reader that like we are going to enter some very intense imagery from Ukraine. Um, obviously, there is Lindsay Adario's stunning photo at the bottom right of the page there. Um, that shows the family who was killed sure. while trying to flee in, in Airpin. Um, you know, I think we want we want to kind of set up our readers so that those images are not kind of, you know, uh, coming out of the out of the blue, and and we want to prepare you for that. So we also want to give space for the photographers to kind of share their stories from the from the front lines, uh, and and then we do that with with Lindsay uh, in that kind of extended interview uh, that runs on this on this spread. Yeah. Um, so we we kind of came up with these. I think there are three uh, throughout the uh, print section um, that kind of function like this with a black bar across the top rather than a month by month. Mm -hmm. um, these photos are from February and March. Um, I think as are the next as is the next uh, 
spread, but we would have essentially these four page groupings of only Ukraine before we go back into stories from the rest of the year. Um, this is an unforgettable Tyler Hicks photo from February of a dead Russian soldier um, on the side of the road. Um, you know, this ran on the front page at the top uh, of the front page in February, and it was kind of one of the earliest indicators that uh, the situation was going to be very uh, intense and prolonged. One of the iconic photos from yeah. uh, Ukraine uh, over the year, and this is Tyler Hicks's uh, little essay that goes with the uh, with this page. Uh, in looking at the other photos on this page, um, this one from uh, March in Kiev, families clambered onto a packed train going west as Russian forces began to encircle the capital. Uh, panicked residents were desperate to get out. This is a, a Lindsay Adario photo. Um, this one is the uh, the first photo online, and um, you know it's part of a, a, a slideshow um, that runs. Did you you know what was your um, you know it, selecting the photos is the first step, right? Mm -hmm. Figuring out working with Mary Jane and others on the design and how the page comes together is one thing. What about the interactive uh, page on the website? How involved were you with that? Very. Um... And that's, you know, building that kind of carousel of images that runs at the top of the interactive is is also kind of a, a very, you know, a thoughtful process that we try to engage in um, with Jeffrey and, and Megan and I. Um, you know, this image is one that's always kind of, you know, really captivated me, um, just seeing uh, the expression on the woman's face as people kind of push towards this opening on the on the train. And I, and I think to me, you know, it's it's an image that we I think at one point tried as a as a print cover, but again, it's when you see it kind of cropped in that um, in that cover template, it just doesn't uh, quite work. But um, online, it it really had the impact that it it needed to have, and I and I thought was a strong um, kind of lead into the year um, that also again put Ukraine at the forefront of uh, uh, of the coverage or and of the collection. Excuse me. Um, and we're going to show the uh, that online. Um, um, oops. Yeah, there we go. And I'm going to refresh that in just a moment so you can see how that <clears throat> starts. It starts with that picture mm -hmm. and you have that um, that look right there. And um, I'll say the the digital designers on the on the project, um, Alice Fang and, and Matt Ruby, uh, you know, we collaborate you know, I collaborated very closely with them to, you know, kind of make sure that we had, you know, the crops as, you know, correct as possible to align with like the text placement and that they look great on both desktop and mobile where, you know, an increasing share of our readers uh, kind of approach the digital stories from. So sure, um, we wanted to, you know, I wanted to kind of put together a collection of images at the top that, you know, again, kind of really highlighted Ukraine, but also showed a, a glimpse at some of the other stories in the mix. So like we have uh, the overturning of Roe v. Wade, um, this you know very nice climate story by Tomas Manita, um, this story about uh, rural poverty by Maddie McGarvey in West Virginia, um, and, and obviously that photo from uh, Odessa um, by Letitia Van Con. Sure. And, and while we're here, I'll just take a moment um, to, uh, to share with folks what it looks like online. I uh, always like seeing what the online treatment is. You have that uh, essay by Joseph Kahn. And what's interesting is that you, you do have it under the rest of it under a read more. So people can, you know, get right to the photos. Um, it, but if they want to read it and then you have January um, and you have months on the left, if you want to uh, skip to a month, you could, uh, but then it's, it's a long scroll going down. Uh, mm -hmm. some of the essays. Yes, and the interviews um, were done by Dion Searcy, uh, one of our amazing reporters on the climate team who similarly will break away from her um, her usual job for, for a few weeks or a few months to handle the huge process of interviewing all the photographers that we decide we want to speak to for the collection, which I think, I think we gave her something like 50 or 55 interviews and She's she's just great at getting photographers, you know, who are sometimes not always the most, you know, well spoken uh, people. They speak with their images, primarily, <laughs> so but she's able to really get them to say, you know, fascinating things about their work. 
And so these are, are, are those photos. Did you put more photos online than you used in print or were you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I think online we have, uh, I think there are about 136 pictures, I want to say, in the collection this year versus in print. Um, gosh, I, you know, I don't know the total off the top of my head. Let me see if I can get you an answer. Some, something less there. than that. Uh, less than that. 70, 70 images in print. Oh, wow. Um, so. and, and for each month, uh, it's, you know, I'm noting the uh, full size image in terms of the width of the, the page. Uh, almost like a, a cover photo, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. that yeah, we want to make those intro, those uh, beginnings of the month have as you know as high impact as if they were their own, you know, section cover. Um, and certainly, a lot of Ukraine uh, photography. I remember these photos from the uh, uh, train station uh, from mm -hmm. the from the underground um, when they came out. I'm not seeing unless uh, I haven't approached it yet a separate call out for Ukraine online. Is that right? Um, no, you won't, you won't approach that uh, online. We, again, we had this kind of the same uh, decision making process that we had for print, but in, we ultimately decided that it was more streamlined for the, for readers to kind of get that content throughout, like it just kind of interspersed with, with the months. Um, I think we do, often lead lead the months online off with uh, a section of Ukraine if there is a section of Ukraine images there, um, certainly for March and, and April. Um, and we lead with an image that is hopefully a little uh, less intense so that you can kind of be set up for the more uh, graphic images that, you know, appear later. Sure. Um, so let's go back to uh, our view of the paper uh, as I change the layout right there. There we go. Um, so that was our little uh, uh, visit with the online version. We'll go back to the hard copy and we'll just check in to see uh, some of the questions that have come in uh, since then. Uh, let's see, scrolling back. Um, and uh, there we go. So my mom was uh, adding uh, analysis of the photographs can describe a lot of history and, and details. Um, absolutely. Um, it's a great way to tell stories. Um, and, uh, you know, Stefan is saying that photo uh, by Lindsay of the woman looking down from what was her home is a perfect lead photo for that spread. Um, you can turn the page. Yes, on the first Ukraine uh, spread, yeah. Yeah, right here. This one is what he's uh, talking about. Um, it's an artillery war, um, and it's important to find out, find and get the images to show the human element. Absolutely. Great insights, again, from our friend Stefan Kaplan. Thank you, Stefan, uh, for what you're adding to the show. Um, and uh, Wayne Camadoy uh, echoed uh, your comment. So echoing Tanner's comment on the added challenge to make images work together as a two-page print spread, both aesthetically and for content. Digital presentation is a different edit as it's a scroll. Absolutely. Totally. Exactly right. Thanks, Wayne. <laughs> Thank you for watching, Wayne, and thank you, Wayne, for all of your help, uh, not just with this week's show, but uh, almost all of our shows. <coughs> Wayne has been great about sharing uh, PDFs, uh, heads up on special sections, um, and then joining us Sunday mornings to add additional insight during the live show. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, um uh, Patricia has an interesting question. What is the timeline from start to finish or editing uh, a day, a week, hours um, for? Oh, gosh. Or, yeah. How does that work? Well, we um, as I said, we we kind of Jeffrey uh, Scales is the um, Sunday opinion uh, editor and or photo editor. And he and I both break from our, um, you know, those jobs, him on opinion and, and myself on styles. We We split off from that and late September, early October, and we are kind of hunkered down and only working on this uh, for about three months. So uh, kind of giving a loose sense of the timeline, uh, you know, October is kind of our main research month where we are going through the photos from every month and kind of pulling what we, you know, think are the most interesting pictures. And we keep a very broad, um, you know, kind of scope of that for, uh, 
you know, the first pass through. So we'll, like I said, we'll start with the 10 or 15,000 images that were published um, each month. And then we will kind of get that first set of uh, monthly pictures down to around five to 700 images, um, which maybe sounds like very, uh, a very tight edit, but you know, we have to, we have to even, even keeping a very open mind, we have to have a lot of scrutiny. Um, so we'll do that for each month of pictures. We kind of also break down the year into quarters. So we'll, we'll do January, February, and March, and then we'll stop and we'll review um, images from each of those months together, talk through what, you know, we think stands out and what doesn't. And what is kind of remarkable about the process, you know, as a, as a photo editor is how, you know, differently the images will stand out when you see them in a group of 10,000 versus a group of 500. And then from there on, you know, in a group of, you know, 100 or 50 or 20, um, something that's stood out, you know, in a, in a, in a group of a much larger group of photos may, may not rise to the occasion once you're looking at a much more refined set. So one photo that, that stood out, uh, certainly both when it came out, but then also, uh, certainly making your list is this one of, uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Katanji Brown Jackson and her daughter um, set the uh, sorry Stefan offering a little the, of the background mm -hmm. where uh, she stole the show um, uh, the photographer with this photo um, of uh, her daughter looking on as her mother was uh, during the confirmation hearings. Um, this had to have been a no brainer, right? Yes, this is this is one image that we knew we would. Uh, include and it's it is a wonderful and surprising moment that that Sarah Beth Manny captured here. Um, just a very unique image from from this confirmation hearing. Obviously, Justice uh, Jackson is a you know was a historic uh, nominee in addition to the court as the first Black woman, uh, and this image that uh, just showed her her daughter looking on with this you know smile on her face kind of hinted at that you know marking that historical moment and what it meant for. Um, you know, not just her family in a, in a personal way, but, you know, potentially also for, for many, you know, uh, you know, young black women around the country. So it's a, it was a very, you know, moving image. And I think Sarah Beth's, you know, comments even, you know, add to that. And Naomi uh, adds, uh, good photos always enhance important stories. And I think that uh, never more so with the, than with this picture right here. Um, Agreed. And, um, Oh, I, I so it's we have a, a comment from your mom. I'm hoping. Let me see if I can read it. I'm hoping it's something. Uh, good little tidbit there. Uh, no, um, I can't embarrass Tanner online. I want him to come home again. Oh, mom. Good answer, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you'd give it up, but yeah, worth the worth a shot. Worth the shot. Worth the shot, right? Um, again, uh, Tanner Curtis is our guest today. He was a co-editor of the Year in Pictures, uh, spent three months working on the project, uh, leaving his uh, desk at, with the New York Times Styles section. We will certainly be talking about styles later today, but we are taking a deep dive into the Year in Pictures. These are This last page was, um, as Tanner mentioned, uh, this was a March, April, May um, uh, page, if you will, these uh, five photos. And uh, these are May and June. Um, so they're not necessarily exclusive in terms of uh, the months, some a little overlap. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, like I say, we, we do stick mostly to chronology, um, you know, in the, in the paper, but we, we do blend photos from, you know, multiple months together. Um, sure. Here is a haunting photo. Um, I'm looking at the rest of this page. The the other pictures, we'll get back to this. This is uh, uh, Garden Valley, Nevada, um, a, a land uh, art sculpture. Um, this is a picture from Buffalo uh, after the uh, funeral uh, for one of the 10 victims of the shooting there uh, earlier in the year. Jerusalem, Israeli police officers attacked mourners carrying the coffin of Shireen Abu uh Akhle, if I'm pronouncing it uh, correctly, the, the journalist that was shot. Um, this is about Roe v. Wade. Um, this is the photo you chose for Ovalde, Texas, for the mass shooting there. 
Talk yeah, just about that. Sure. Um, I mean, it, the the you know the question of how to address uh, mass shootings, you know, in the collection is is one that we you know it comes up a lot because there are so many mass shootings in the in the U.S. and you know on this page even we have you know images from two different uh, shootings that happened in the same uh, month, both in Buffalo and, and Uvalde. Um, on the digital collection, you'll see that we do have a, a, I mean, a very striking and unique news photo um, by Pete Luna from the, uh, the, the newspaper in Uvalde um, of you know, students being evacuated from the school, which is not a scene that we're, we're used to seeing. But in the, in the print collection, we chose this, um, this kind of quieter, more poetic, but still, I think, you know, equally intense image by Tamir Khalifa, um, who's really spent a lot of time you know, since the uh, the the shooting there, um, you know, building relationships and, and getting to know the families of these of these children um, who were who were killed, and you know, uh, through through gaining their their trust and, and building those relationships, was able to kind of see this really striking image of a um, one of the children's notebooks that has been ripped apart with bullets, which um, is, I mean, even right now, it's like an image that almost that really moves me to nearly tears it's it's just very heartbreaking and and personal to see um you know something like this as a an inroads to a you know a national tragedy absolutely and thank you for sharing that with us we actually had uh tom jolly on the show uh just after uh uvaldi um and i remember uh going over the uh how the front page evolved the the uh, how the the coverage evolved uh, where we, you got the, the first reports and then you had the uh, photo of the, um, the kids leaving uh, the school. Um, I mean, these are, these are, you know, obviously this was one of the most heart wrenching stories of the year, the Buffalo shooting. Um, and to know <laughs> that you only have one photo that, I mean, obviously with Ukraine, you had several, but uh, I'm guessing this was the one photo you had for Evaldi the one photo you had for Buffalo. Right. And yeah, it's, it is a very difficult task to kind of make those selections. And that's, you know, it's a really challenging part of the process. You know, we have maybe a couple more representations of them online, but not, not much more. And there's a huge range of images that our photographers make on assignments um, covering these stories over many, many months. And uh, to kind of distill those to, you know, only a few is a, a really challenging process and, and many, really strong images, you know, end up on the cutting room floor and it's, you know, they're equal, they could have their own entire collection, but we sure. have to keep this, a, a, you know, a tight edit, as tight in it as we can. I was going to say no pressure, you know, trying to pick one photo uh, to, to reflect, uh, to represent an event like mm -hmm. that. Um, here's uh, flooding in India in Assam. Um, so that's a, again, very poignant photo. And then just a gorgeous photo here of San Francisco, a soupy fog shrouded the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, famous fog has long defined life along the coast, but some scientists say it is decreasing and they're not sure why. So I guess that's more of a climate change photo. Right. Um, and that's kind of, uh, you know, I, we love to find the images that kind of straddle both lines of being, you know, not only gorgeous imagery, but attached in a surprising way to a, um, to a very important news story. So I think that Nina uh, Riggio photo from San Francisco does that really well. Mm -hmm. This is a photo from Pride in New York. Uh, and I know Stefan has always been a, a big supporter of Pride and has some great photos uh, as well. Um, so definitely uh, uh, check, out, um, check out his photos there. And then now we have another Ukraine uh, section. <clears throat> So another, we're going to have another two pages uh, or four pages rather. Right. I'm assuming. So left behind, uh, I think it's Buka um, mass graves and in Buka mass graves in hunger. Um, mm -hmm. And this is this essay is by Daniel. Um, uh, Bear Hulak. Yeah. Bear Hulak. So that's just a great, great set of photos mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, and I'll point out the image on the bottom right is is one of my. You know, it's hard to say favorite. It's such a tragic image, but one of the most memorable images from the collection to me um, from Ukraine is this Finbar O'Reilly image um, of a, a soldier looking at his twin brother um, who was killed in action. And it's just, 
you know, it's it's one of those that it, it tells the whole story without even needing the the caption. Um, and it just the more you know about it, the more it, it just breaks your heart. It's a it's a really tragic but really incredible image that again kind of personalizes this you know global uh, news event um, and you know global story that we're all reading about every day. Yeah. Uh, another uh, several photos uh, from Ukraine. Uh, this uh, essay is by David um, Guttenfelder. Mm -hmm. Tell me if I mispronounced that. No, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, David's so an amazing right. photographer. Yeah. Absolutely. There's another Tyler Hicks image. Um, these, I believe, are mostly from April, some May, and some. Uh, one june photo i believe so again we're kind of loosely chronological but kind of blending sure together. sure and then back to june july august um now this is yeah. uh this is from the uh um the telescope from the web telescope james webb telescope right yes um, and i'll say this is another image that we knew from the get-go that we wanted to include um even though is, it's not a this traditional particular piece. image or something from the telescope i think this particular image mostly because it, it it was the image that kind of led off that coverage in in july it was one of the first images that we you know saw from the telescope and it it was just kind of in you know all of our memories as like you know a defining moment from the year um obviously there was more images that were you know released later in the fall but this this just felt like it, it was the natural one to include. And, and I'll say, I don't know if it's, it's hard to pick, a, again, a favorite image from the year, but this is one of my favorites just because it's, you can really get lost in the majesty of, and the, and the, the layers of this picture, the more you know about it. It's, it's pretty amazing. And, and, and then also like this spread is one of my favorites in the, in the section, because it's like, it's so many topics that, you know, when you look at them just listed on paper, you'd be like, I don't know, understand how these all relate to each other, yet the pictures work in perfect harmony here. Um, so you have, you know, the uh, NASA, the James Webb telescope image, uh, you have this uh, photo below it of uh, uh, a uh, Native American uh, powwow in Montana that uh, Taylor Irvine uh, photographed um, uh, this summer. And then you have the kind of control room at, I believe NBC or MSNBC um, during the I January 6th. Yeah. yeah, during the uh, January 6th uh, committee hearings in June by uh, Sina Nasseri. Um, and then another you know, beautiful climate change picture of uh, uh, um, logging in, in Congo. And I I'm, I'm apologize, I'm blanking on the photographer's uh, name at the- Ar Arlette uh, yes. Arlette uh, Bashizi, yes. Bashizi. <clears throat> So I just, you know, I think there, there are four very stunning images that, you know, in some world should never be together on a spread, but they, you know, again, this our, our print designers make them work beautifully together here. One question on the photo credits. These are uh, Arlette <clears throat> Bashizi for the New York Times. Um, does that indicate that Arlette and, and the others, this is uh, Sina Nasseri, Mm -hmm. Are those freelancers or um, versus right. uh, staff photographers? That's right. Our freelancers all receive a credit that is, you know, for the New York Times versus our um, our staff photographers and um, our photo fellows now, uh, which we all we have two throughout the year. They receive a slash credit to indicate that they're staff photographers. So, Good. yeah, Michelle Michelle Agens and, and Damon Winter on this spread are yeah. uh, staff photographers. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that. So here's another uh, August September spread. Mm -hmm. Lebanon, Tennessee in the top left, uh, New York uh, with that purple uh, dress, mm -hmm. uh, embroidery, Fort Myers, Florida in the bottom left uh, after Hurricane Ian. Fairview Park, Ohio. Um, this is uh, Katrina Rainey's termination of a fetus uh, with a severe brain uh, defect to protect its healthy twin took place just before Ohio made the procedure illegal. Um, and and then, one of our, yeah, two photos from that kind of address the overturning of Roe v. Wade in the section, uh, the previous being a few spreads back uh, from Meredith Cohut of uh, um, staff at a um, yeah. abortion clinic in Texas reacting to the um, decision. And then climate change, Disco Bay, Greenland. 
I'm, I'm assuming it's climate change. Uh, yes. Fisherman, fisherman was dwarfed by a mountainous iceberg uh, calved from the Saranac uh, Glacier, one of the fastest moving and most productive glaciers in the world. Um, I mean, you, you obviously over the, the course, not just what you did online, but even just in print, you're covering so many topics and so many uh, events, um, so many issues here um, on the left-hand side, Iran, uh, of course, um, and the, the protests and the and the uh, the killings there. You have uh, the Daring Gap Panama picture um, in terms of immigration and trying to um, crossing the border. Uh, a shot of uh, fencing. And here from London, um, William and Catherine, Harry and Meghan, uh, certainly. This is when um, Queen Elizabeth uh, passed, and you see them mourning. I'm curious about this shot of Serena Williams. Um, so you know, this is, it's interesting that the Serena Williams shot that you chose um, has an arm through the middle of it. <laughs> um, can you um, can you tell me about that? Yeah, sure. Um, this is, I mean, this is I I think kind of an incredible photo by our photographer um, and photo editor Hiroko uh, Masuike, who's um, you know sometimes an editor, sometimes a photographer for us. And uh, she, you know, in her quote, kind of talks about how I mean, she kind of really prepared for this image uh, to to make this image. And I think like that it kind of gets at. The stature of of Serena Williams, uh, you know, kind of stepping away from the game that has made her, a, you know, an international superstar. Um, you're kind of assisted in that by, you know, even though she herself is quite small in the frame, uh, the text on the wall that's his greatest of all time, and this, you know, outstretched arm kind of waving her, you know, farewell as she waves back. Um, so it, it felt like an image that kind of really uh, spoke to the. You know immensity of that moment and and her stature as you know a you know global sports superstar and i want to remind folks that the pdf for this special section the year in pictures is available on our website we also have a gift link to the uh year in pictures page online if you are interested uh, you can find it by going to digimentors.group slash blog digimentors.group slash blog the most recent um, uh, piece is the one about Tanner uh, Curtis, about his his appearance on the show. I know Paula has shared the direct link to that page uh, earlier as well. Um, I, and I assumed it was intentional. Uh, I assumed you wouldn't. That wasn't a, a, a thumb in the uh, picture <laughs> type photo, um, but it is it is impressive. And sometimes there are you know happy accidents that lead to amazing images. Um, but I think that one is just one that really spoke to Hiroko's foresight and, and planning for, for that moment. Sure. Sure. Um, it looks like is going to be joining us for <laughs> a little bit. No worries. We're, we're a pet friendly, uh, show. What's your cat's name? Um, her name is TK, which if you're, you know, familiar with the journalism, you know, parlance is, is something you use when you have, a to come something you're expecting to come later for yeah. as a placeholder. We struggled with a name and someone suggested that and we stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> I we had a cat for 19 years. Uh, he passed away several years ago, unfortunately. Uh, mm. But uh, it, it wasn't a journalism name. His full name was Lyle Lovett Parik, um, <laughs> uh, and I always went with the full uh, three names. I mean, Lyle Lovett. It's good. My last name Parik. Um, he was my baby, and and then I had a real baby later, <laughs> who's now nine. Um, uh, Ukraine, another another uh, spread on Ukraine. Um, this mm -hmm. one with an essay by Finbar uh, O'Reilly mm -hmm. um, on the left. You see this uh, shot over here. Uh, a shot of uh, crosses marking a grave site. And then a Ukrainian artillery unit fired on Russian forces. We have a lot of motivation, um, a captain said. And, you know, if I, I mean, the first glance when I was literally, when I was just looking at the photo, I'm like, oh, that's an artillery piece. It looks like a gorgeous sun, sunrise or something, right? And, but no, that's a right. capture of the blast from the uh, artillery. 
Um, right. That it's, is some interesting photography to get yes. that spot. It's incredible, yeah, incredible timing um, by David Gutenfelder, and even to have the the two soldiers in the foreground kind of you know bending over and plugging their their ears is is a, an extra you know wonderful yeah. element of that uh, of that very intense image. Um, and I'll just, you know, say kind of, again, as we're kind of like looking at the Ukraine, you know, print spreads and, and thinking about the, you know, we're kind of thinking about Ukraine throughout the year as having kind of a um, a story arc that we wanted to make sure that we we're kind of representing when not, you know, obviously we've, we've covered many scenes of, uh, you know, explosions and shelling and mass graves and fires and funerals. Um, so, you know, we, we, you know, there's the International Desk has, has run their own, you know, continuing kind of stack of, of photos online of the uh, of the war throughout the year um, that's much more expansive than what we included in the year in pictures but we really had to to look closely and make some really tough decisions about the um, you know kind of which images we wanted to include so as not to you know uh, repeat you know so much one one scene over and over again you know sure. obviously we, we had the Daniel Barry Hulek mass grave picture earlier, but this Nicole Tong image on the previous spread, we felt like added to that conversation. Um, as is this David Gutenfelder picture of, uh, you know, uh, someone working to uh, recover who had lost his legs in, in battle. Yeah, it, it, incredible. Um, and then this picture from Laura uh, Boschnack, mm -hmm. um, uh, nap time at uh, Uniclub, a uh, um, a sh recast itself as a shelter um, and providing services for displaced children. Right. Very, very moving. Uh, and then we get into <clears throat> October, November. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'll just, uh, you know, to give folks a heads up, we are uh, sticking with the year in pictures. We'll be finishing up fairly soon and we'll have a chance to look at the style section with tanner uh but we certainly want to spend most of today's show on the year in pictures because it's such a uh, significant uh project uh, tanner spent three months on this we can spend um you know about an hour uh just on year in pictures uh here is uh, from greenville mississippi sand dunes in the mississippi river uh, again the climate change um, right. And this was an image that when we saw it, it just, you know, it took our breath away and we were immediately were like, this has to be in the collection, um, which we, you know, this is an image from October that I don't, I believe didn't publish until sometime in November. So we kind of were alerted to it a little bit later in the process. And so mm. we were like, but this has to go in. It's such a shocking image of the real world impact of, of, of climate change happening, you know, just on the banks of the Mississippi river. This is a, a picture of um, uh, after an earthquake in Indonesia. Um, we have a picture uh, from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Um, two, uh, um, uh, Mufe Al Qatani and Mubarak Al Qatani celebrating a government sponsored horror weekend. A few years ago, Halloween partygoers risked arrest. I remember that mm -hmm. uh, around Halloween, where they actually observed Halloween in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, lots um, of great photos from that story by Tamir Khalifa. This uh, uh, picture of David um, conserving his beauty makes her job as a restorer the best in the world, Ms. Pucci said. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the stampede in uh, Seoul, um, mm -hmm. Korea. <clears throat> Tragic scene captured by our, our staff photographer there, Cheng Lee, um, who, you know, Rushed to the scene as as soon as he as soon as he could and followed the the outpouring of grief there for for days that followed. Um, and we thought this you know there are any number of images again from this um, from this story that we could have could could have gone with, but we felt that this image kind of you know both you know showed a little bit gave a little bit of context for the the, the narrow space in which the stampede happened. Also kind of had the Halloween element with the jack o' lantern there and. Um, obviously still a lot of detritus on the ground. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's one picture from a, from a whole, from a larger news story. Sure. Um, and then uh, one question I had when you're looking for, um, uh, you know, looking at, at pictures, what's your system in terms of uh, tagging uh, photos? I mean, do you, are, are these, uh, these have multiple tags, this photo in particular, 
um, for example, how is this found in your system? Um, well, um, we we have um, we've actually just migrated to a new um, kind of uh, photo archive system. But you know, previously and, and soon in the new one, we'll be able to um, we're able to search um, you know images that were published uh, each month and images that were published either online or in print. Uh, and you know that's kind of where we begin our search. But we can also search by you know our staff photographers' names, which we you know of course we do those. Um, we look at everyone's every staff photographer's body of work from the year and try to you know include as as much as we can from each and and have that representation. Um, but uh, as we kind of go th go throughout, we're making folders you know just kind of month month by month. So this image went into our October folder, and as we kind of refine that edit, we move it into um, you know, an October edit two folder and then an October edit three folder and then maybe like a final edit folder for, for October. <laughs> do you, but do you also tag them, you know, uh, by topic uh, so that you can, you know, whether like all climate change photos or all, um, you know, Ukraine or, or that type of thing? Mm -hmm. We um, we don't really have a way of doing that in our, in our system. Um, we did, as, as we went through, we did gather Ukraine photos, you know, in in with their you know the month in which they occurred but also we kind of put them all together to um like i said have kind of a an overview of of uh all the notes that we were hitting with ukraine throughout the year and to make sure that we had a very strong selection and uh a selection that showed the you know kind of diverse range of scenes and images that we we're able to capture from there so effectively manually you kind of organize them yeah right great um and uh Let's see. Look at a couple of four, a couple more comments that have come in. Um, you know, Patricia says thank you to the New York Times Relong team and Tanner. Awesome episode. Uh, so definitely uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, and then Stefan gives a, a big shout out to Nicole Tung. Um, learn about this great photo journalist and follow her on Instagram. Support all the hardworking, incredibly uh, brave photographers bringing the world to us each and every day. Absolutely. Absolutely, Stefan. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Jay Palaki uh, says, Happy New Year and happy to be turning into my first New York Times read-along of the year. Uh, absolutely. It's our first first show of the year, Jay. Uh, for everyone who is watching and in case you're uh, joining us late, as soon as the show is over, uh, you'll be able to watch from the beginning uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on YouTube. Uh, and on our website uh, from the very beginning, just as soon as uh, um, the show is over. So certainly encourage you to watch from the beginning. Uh, we've had a great conversation with uh, Tanner uh, Curtis, um, and uh, we will. We're not done yet. We still will talk a little bit about styles before we before we go. Wayne uh, uh, says the photo um, uh, edit for this section is the process on steroids, uh, a standing work. Uh, some high praise coming from our friend Wayne Camadoy. Um, and then Sarah uh, uh, Whittington, thank you for the excellent first show of 2023. Um, Sarah is a name that I'm not familiar with, uh, new to me. Uh, Sarah, I don't know if you're a regular watcher and first time commenter or if you're a friend of Tanner's. Tanner, do you know Sarah? I don't, but I appreciate you tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, uh, Stefan wants to make special mention of, uh, this, a standing photo, uh, by Frederico Rios. <clears throat> this was a few pages back. We'll get back to it. Um, from the Darien gap. Um, let's see if we can find that. I think this one oh, right yeah. here, right? Yeah. Uh, and I'll take uh, one of the most horrible, dangerous regions for those looking to make the trek to the U S uh, Carlos, uh, Villa Villalon is, covered it for well for years i'm going to take the comment off just so we can see the photo mm -hmm. clearly but uh but yes absolutely stunning um, so many amazing pictures from federico from that story too it's like it was hard to pick the one sure and then the last page this november december photo uh this spread the this the vigil outside club q um in uh colorado springs after the shooting there uh, Ron DeSantis mm -hmm. in the bottom here, Nancy Pelosi. So some political photos. Uh, these 
look like they're all political. Well, except for the the shooting. Hard, yeah, this is I this mean, is kind of our way to address. I mean, one of the major stories of the year was the 2022 midterm elections, yeah. and um, you know, we kind of you know we struggle with this in every election year. I think of of you know the the coverage goes on obviously intensely for every month of the year, but you know to kind of represent it in this collection, it's uh, it's something that's very challenging to it's it's challenging to do. So we kind of decide decided this year to kind of just keep it contained um, to November. Uh, and we wanted to kind of address some of the major you know players and, and themes. Um, and one thing I love about that Hillary Swift photo on the top right of uh, the person looking at uh, you know former President Trump's face on the bus is it kind of is a way to include his role in the in the midterm elections without you know showing him you know speaking at a podium he kind of loomed over the the candidacies of of people like uh you know Mehmet Oz in Pennsylvania yeah. and Herschel Walker in in Georgia um but as we kind of saw that you know influence has maybe waned a bit um so we thought this was a really poetic way of addressing that it's also interesting that the the photo was made uh as the light was uh uh <laughs> waning um right uh, i can only assume intentionally but that's another layer of that uh yeah it's, it was it's when uh yeah it's it's one of those where it's like this is this is when hillary was there for for the event and obviously photographers are drawn to beautiful light so you know you make this picture um and then some meanings i think can be kind of attached to it after the yeah, fact so absolutely so that is the year in photos, and, and it brings us back to the, the back page, which was that wraparound cover. Um, and uh, so again, I uh, want to thank you for walking us through, and we'll take it back to the, as you mentioned earlier, when we started the conversation, that wraparound cover had to work as both a, a wraparound and as a, you know what was important in the top right quadrant for the uh, folded half of the page. Um, and we're seeing what that looks like uh, right here. Um, so uh, thank you uh, again for walking us through um, all of that. It was really great. Uh, I mean, a lot of work, obviously. Hats off to all the photographers, but also to the editors and you and uh, Jeffrey as well for choosing the pictures. Uh, we'd like to turn our attention now. We have a few minutes left, uh, Tanner. Uh, we yeah. will do our best not to... Uh, go to past 10 o'clock uh, Eastern time. But we do want to spend some time with Sunday Styles since that's your ostensibly your desk. Uh, you've right. been uh, <laughs> what on leave for uh, a few months. Um, but you can still walk us through some of this, uh, I believe. And there is an sure. interesting uh, um, article. And, and I'm thinking maybe it's not in Styles, the one about uh, photography. Is that in Styles or... I think it is actually in the business section. Yeah, I think it was in um, business. Um, yeah. So let's start with that first. Let's just do that one one quick article. Um, that's right. The 20-year-old camera <laughs> is um, Gen Z's uh, hottest gadget. And I wanted to make sure we got there because I know that uh, Pradnya uh, mentioned early on that her kid wanted an iPix uh, camera for Christmas. Um, and that she knows that she's going to be spending a small fortune on film. Uh, for that camera. Um, yeah. Well, it's it's funny this this story made me think about kind of how I, you know, got my start in in photography as a as a teenager and I, you know, kind of did that by carrying around disposable cameras all the time. Uh uh and that was, you know, in the early early thousands and I, you know, would take pictures of my friends, I would take pictures at, you know, punk shows and stuff around town and, you know, use lots of hard flash, lots of blur. Mm -hmm. uh, spent lots of money getting them developed and you know digitized at you know Walgreens. Uh, so yeah, it's funny to see that trend kind of coming back around. So and here's the inside; it's a full page. Uh, yeah. So it's it's nice to see a lot of good photography with this story about photography. Um, above, Sadie Gray uh, uses a point and shoot camera for her photography uh, Instagram account. Left Taylor Swift used a digital camera at Katy Perry's birthday party okay so that's interesting um and that. um photographs by uh, uh zonia robinson below um all also taken with point and shoot cameras um so <laughs> i'll say i mean so so it is actually interesting um 
I got my daughter a, uh, a camera, an underwater camera for our trip to Maui. Um, she took some great pictures while snorkeling. Um, better than, one, than the ones I got. Uh, I had a GoPro that I rented, but I had enough trouble just, uh, you know, breathing and swimming. <laughs> she was like a little fish in there. So she got the, uh, the turtle shot that I didn't. Um, but my, my next uh, thing is I do want to get her a, a point and shoot. But, you know, I've, I've had trouble finding a, a camera with a viewfinder. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. I feel like a lot have migrated to a, uh, you know, it's just on the, you know, the screen, LCD screen or whatever. Yeah. On the back. I mean, I, what mm -hmm. I was hoping was I could get her a camera that she, I mean, I wanted to get her thinking like, you know, holding the camera to her face and shooting. Um, but uh, you have to put in a little bit more money than to get that these days. Um, True. But this is this is definitely an interesting uh, story. So let's take a look at the style section uh, as we're approaching the end of today's show. Um, one of the things that we always note about styles is the nice paper that you get to use. Um, and, uh, it, you know, our understanding, and I think this was when we had Stuart Elliott on the show several years ago. And I think he first clued us into it. But that uh, advertisers, advertisers want the nicer paper for their... Mm -hmm for their ads, but this also gives a, a better shine to the photographs. That right. You use, and right? it's the same. We get also get the nice paper for the year in pictures. So I think, sure. You know, it certainly helps. Sure. Um, so this is uh, the t style section. Um, looking at some of these. So this is another, this is a picture of uh, um, from left Nino melon squaring the circle firefly <laughs> and emerald coin are four mocktails on the menu. Yeah. Um, this is a fun, a fun little story about how, um, you know, non-alcoholic cocktails have, uh, you know, we've written many times about their surge in popularity, but now they're surging in price um, and they're served on menus alongside, you know, full alcoholic drinks at, uh, you know, not that much of a uh, price difference. So Krista Schlater did a really beautiful job photographing these drinks at um, a bar Nubelez in, uh, in the city. Yeah. Uh, our friend uh, Apollo uh, is joining us. Uh, thank you, Apollo. Uh, and again, you can always watch the show from the beginning. Um, Jay is saying that. Oops. Jay is saying that those GoPros are tough to manage while swimming. I absolutely agree. I had uh, one hand on the GoPro, one hand on a boogie board, just to make sure that I had something else to hold on to. Um, and I was trying to keep an eye on my daughter. But um, but yes, uh, it was definitely definitely fun. Um, we have uh, it, what's interesting with styles. I think there's uh, there's more. I mean, there's this this photography, uh, this graphic image. I guess. Uh, and that's a, yeah, that's an illustration. Um, illustration. Commissioned, yeah, commissioned by our art director uh, Tanya uh, Dory for this episode column that runs every uh, every week and features a new writer each week. And I haven't noticed this before, but uh, this arena highlights from T Magazine. Uh, dot com. I mean, we see the T Magazine uh, monthly. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think I remember seeing it uh, highlighted in the print uh, section. It is uh, it is here every week on, in Sunday Styles on on page three. It, it takes yeah. up about half to three quarters of a page, or two thirds of a page, I believe. Interesting. I will I, uh, uh, hold on this article for some. The mask maintains its hold. The triple demic has revived familiar fears and tensions. I will say that we are still masking up. We're still uh, staying careful when we go out. Um, my wife and I, but around us, uh, not so much. Um, it's certainly, and, and I've heard a number of people, both family and friends who have had COVID over the last several uh, weeks. Um, so it's still, it's still a thing, unfortunately, still a thing. Um, so how is the photography different? You worked in, uh, uh, on the, uh, in the national section, did a lot of political work. Yeah. Before joining Styles, how is the photo editing different for Styles versus? Oh, well, it's it's quite different um, yeah. from in every in every way. Um, with you know, I, I covered. I've been at the Times since 2014 and started on the national desk before shifting gears to politics and in, in late 2016. Um, I did that until 2021. Um, you know, with with so much of, of news, you're you're following the news and you're trying to plan for the news and and put people in the right spots to capture important moments as they unfold. Um, 
in politics, you're liaising with campaigns to kind of make sure you're always aware of the you know candidates' movement and and the voter sentiments. So um, it's a lot of being kind of clued in and aware and 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 in some ways kind of working all the time. Um, it's a little different on the style section where you know features are planned out a little more in advance. Um, it's a little less reactive. You get um, a chance to kind of uh, approach things a little differently photographically. I think actually on this spread, you kind of see two really strong examples of the different type of photography that we get to do in the um, style section. And, and I think feature sections kind of in general. On the left, you have this, uh, how we welcome the new year feature, which uh, is another collection of, of short essays written by writers um, around the world about kind of how they welcome the new year. But, you know, it's not kind of economically feasible for us to photograph all of those um, or logistically feasible maybe even to get them turned around so quickly. So our approach, my, my colleague Christy Harmon, who's the other photo editor on the style section assigned, Kyle Berger, this uh, wonderful Toronto-based photographer to kind of essentially make his own little photo essay showing, um, you know, kind of the new year through his eyes. And it ran alongside the the words from writers around the world. Got it. Got it. So all these photos are from one one celebration. Right. It's it's his kind of wandering around Toronto uh, on New Year's Eve. Got it. Um, um, and uh, on the other page, you have uh, you know this is the cover story. You know, inside a, a, a story about how um, you know New York is is kind of adopting a lot of trends and touchstones that exist otherwise in, in Southern California, um, a kind of more, you know, conceptual based story. And uh, again, my colleague, Christy Harmon, uh, worked on this assignment, but it's a kind of really, really entertaining and and smart set of photo illustrations by the photographer, Adam Powell, um, where, you know, he just found all these really smart and, and really delightful ways to kind of show the intersection of of New York City and LA, my favorite of which is that top, I think, left image of the pigeon uh, walking on a subway, you know, great with uh, little Hollywood, you know, Walk of Fame stars. I think it's just so smart. So uh, are, are these, um, um, you know, it's like the stars, for example, are those actually on a grate somewhere or did he set up the shot to to do this? Right. So this this is one. This is the reason they're labeled as photo illustration is, you know, unlike most photography that appears. It. There we go. Your photo illustration. Yeah. Most obviously, you know, I mentioned our ethical standards earlier. Most the large, you know, large majority of photography that appears in The Times is is, is photo journalism. It's documentary. It's it's lightly, if at all, you know, retouched just to adjust, you know, color and contrast and, and standard cropping. Um, in the feature sections, we get a little more leeway to do um, photo illustrations sometimes, like with what Adam Powell did here, um, where he was, you know, setting this. These are all, you know, set up pictures sure. that are meant to illustrate an idea. Sure. Um, and we want to make sure they're labeled clearly for readers so they, that they know, um, you know, this is this is different from the, the you know, even just on the other page, the, jour the photo journalism that you see from Kyle Berger. Mm -hmm. Or Berger. Or photographed me. by Kyle Berger. Mm -hmm. For the New York Times, absolutely. Thank you. Um, absolutely. And now the 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 wedding vows uh, section, um, always an interesting uh, page to look at. Um, and we've often talked about the evolution of vows uh, over time. Uh, we had Kate uh, Doty on the on the show a year ago, a little little longer. She talked about her time on the page. Um, but I just want to point out, you know, in terms of what I'm seeing here, at least these four um, uh, four uh, uh, weddings, <clears throat> and then this story about uh, renting outfits, which we'll get to. Sarah Khan is a former guest on the show as well. She wrote this piece, when one wedding requires four outfits, try renting. Uh, a new generation of business owners tries to crack the code of South Asian rental attire, uh, which certainly uh, is an interesting concept. Um, but this, uh, this photo, uh, and this little bit of description, um, on this mm -hmm. day, the bride's family compound in, uh, and I'm not going to be able to pronounce the, uh, the location. I'm not going to try, mm -hmm. um, it's in Nigeria, in Nigeria. Um, mm -hmm. but an African ceremony here, um, you have this headline, uh, Margot, 
Cicarelli, Cicarelli uh, and Meg Hay with a little jujitsu getting swept off their feet. Um, obviously a, a gay, uh, a lesbian couple here, which we've seen more of over time, that kind of evolution great. Of, of how the page has evolved. Um, you see this one, Elizabeth Gregory and Charles Aoki, uh, someone in a, a wheelchair, um, a person with disabilities. And then Gray O'Reilly and Eric Osberg. Um, and unless I'm missing something, and unless I'm uh, overlooking something, this looks like a um, two uh, white a heterosexual couple a minority on this page, which I thought was interesting, hmm. um, the way that has evolved. Um, it's nice right. to see that that diversity that. I mean, that, that's I know that's been a shift over years. Right. And I'll say that the you know, the the this is a lot. A lot of the vows section is is kind of submitted photos from the couples who are featured. Um, normally, this top left uh, kind of section on this page, this is this would be the wedding that we sometimes would send a New York Times photographer to go and capture images alongside the you know official wedding photographer which can sometimes lead to some really surprising and wonderful images. Um, mm -hmm. this, this wedding in particular was a little too logistically complicated for <laughs> us to, to get someone to. Um, so we worked with a, um, uh, one of the photographers who the couple had hired and, and, and picked up some images from them. Sure. Uh, and Paula is sharing a link to the weddings page uh, while we're discussing this. Um, but, and also, you know, I'll point out uh, Asian American background as well. Uh, for this couple, it looks like it's at least one, if not both. Um, but, but yeah, that, that diversity is great to see. Um, and then that's the back page of the section. So that's the Sunday style section. Uh, Tanner, we are at, um, 10 Oh three. Uh, so I know that we, we did aim to finish by, uh, 10 o'clock. If I can ask you for a pro tip uh, for for working with photo editors or a pro tip for for photographers, I think, as we discussed it, I'll make a few quick announcements and then um, we will bring you back on uh, on screen. How about uh, that? We'll give you just a quick break. Uh, our guest, of course, has been Tanner Curtis, a photo editor with the uh, New York Times style section. He spent the last three months working on the um, uh, you're in pictures, and he walked us through uh, that whole section. If you're joining us late, uh, you may have missed the the beginnings. I'm wearing my Aloha shirt and showing some of my photographs from our trip to Hawaii back in November. Um, and uh, if you uh, are interested, you can check out my website. Uh, I went live with a website, uh, neilparek.org. It uh, has uh, several photo galleries from, from Maui, and also uh, I'll be starting uh, writing on the site, uh, sharing some blog posts fairly soon. Uh, but that's uh, that's the explanation, the references I had to Maui earlier. Um, you can see a shot that I got of, of Emily swimming in the, in the top uh, corner there. And you can't quite make it out, but that's the turtle that she got a picture of uh, right, right next to her. So a, quick, a couple of quick announcements. Again, I want to give a big shout out to our friend and colleague, Paula Kiger, for all of the great work that she has done in supporting the New York Times Read Along, uh, dropping links to articles, engaging with the audience. Um, Paula, thank you uh, very much. I always appreciate your help. Um, Sri, of course, Sri Srinivasan, of course, is the host. Uh, and I am the um, executive producer and occasional guest host. We want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Muckrack, a longtime sponsor of the show. Uh, thank you for all of your work. Uh, and, and support over the years. Uh, we appreciate the long-term relationship uh, that we've had uh, with you. Uh, we also want to uh, thank um, the, um, uh, recognize rather, uh, the local connection uh, newsletter put out by the Center for Cooperative Media at Montclair State University. Each week, they bring you the local connection newsletter. It offers story ideas and pro tips for journalists. Best of all, it's free. You can subscribe at bit.ly slash local news tips, bit.ly slash local news tips. And of course, uh, the New York Times Read Along is produced by Digimenters, uh, the social and digital consulting firm 
uh, that SRI started um, uh, several years ago. I'm proud to be a vice president of events and communications there. Um, if you have uh, any interest in, in us working on a project with you, either producing a show like this or doing uh, social media audits, trainings, workshops, uh, et cetera, please feel free to reach out. Uh, Sri's email is sri at digimentors.group and mine is neil at digimentors.group. Uh, sri at digimentors.group or neil at digimentors.group. Uh, with that, uh, we will bring uh, Tanner back uh, to the uh, screen. And uh, before we uh, ask Tanner um, uh, to share his pro tip, I just want to share this uh, comment from Diana. Uh, nice show. Uh, thank you for the uh, shout out on the uh, Hawaiian shirt. And she loved learning about photography and layout. Uh, great job. Uh, Tanner, thank you so much. Um, with that, what tips do you have for photographers? Um, well, I'll just say, you know, as I hope you've all seen, uh, this morning, the Times publishes a extremely wide uh, variety of photography um, from around the world and in all of our different sections. And I mean, my advice for, um, you know, either working with photo editors or kind of if you're kind of pursuing, uh, you know, freelance photography or even just your own photography is to, you know, really uh, to shoot you know, the way that you, I don't know, embrace the way that you see the world and to really let that be your, be your style. Um, so much, so many times when uh, working with uh, photographers on assignment for the first time, we'll kind of hit the stumbling block of, um, you know, the, the photo editor loving the way uh, a photographer has documented their own personal projects or personal work. And then when they come to shoot for the, the times, they, you know, shoot the way that they think the New York times, uh, you know, want them to, and then we have to have an adjustment of saying, no, 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 we're hiring you because of the way that you see the world and the way that you approach photography. So, and then once we find that balance, it's 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 smooth sailing from there. So um, embrace your own personal vision, um, stay true to yourself. And I think that will, you know, make your images much more unique and, and, and successful. Thank you. Thank you, Tanner, appreciate that. Um, before we close, uh, I, I've talked a little bit about the photographs on the back of, of my wall uh, that I set up, and, and I, I mentioned that's why I was wearing my Aloha shirt today. Uh, Tanner, would you share what is behind you uh, on your wall? Sure. Um, so I've got a mix of things on this wall. Um, up in the in the, I don't, I can't actually do left and right here, but I'll say this is a uh, flyer from one of the 2020 presidential debates. Um, in, uh, at Belmont University in, in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, this is a, uh, <laughs> uh, an illustration of a drag queen, uh, Alaska, that my husband and I really like. Uh, next to that is a little uh, uh, oil painting of a, uh, or a uh, watercolor painting of, a, of our cat uh, that my friend uh, did for us. We have a save our cat clock and the, a piece that, uh, a knitted piece that my, my husband did. He's, uh, he's a big time, uh, you know, knitting enthusiasts. So there's lots of yarn all over uh, the apartment. <laughs> and then what um, on over lower b below the presidential piece? Uh, oh, what, uh, that? yes, that is a, that's a, a web comic uh, that my husband loves. And uh, he got a print of uh, it says, I'm instantly lonely. And then it's someone looking at the, uh, you know, it's a little bear sitting on a on a chair, getting an email and it says, I'm instantly overwhelmed. <laughs> in the bottom right corner so it's pretty cute and, and then, then i've uh, right behind you yeah this is a uh, just a beautiful print i'm actually and sorry i've kind of forgotten the artist's name um but a print i received as a gift from a photo professor uh a long time ago and it's just it's always been a nice calming and, and beautiful scene so nice nice i i will point out that you know when i when i set up my my photos uh i made the uh uh, uh the editorial decision, and I'm going to put myself in full screen for just a minute. Uh, you can see if I if I line up line it up just right, you know, you see photos over my uh, this shoulder and over this shoulder. But if I duck out of the way and if I turn the chair, you'll see there's nothing in the middle. <laughs> um, it's that's that's the uh, the intentional gap uh, in the wall. Um, you know, this is for my my online audience uh, for meetings, etc. 
I didn't want anything to, you know, I'm not going to want to block something in the middle. So I had to figure out how to, how to place photos. And, and I looked at where the top of the camera hits as well. That's mm -hmm. why you see that Maui 22 sign. If I'm full screen, you'll see it just at the top. Um, so uh, if anyone's interested, those, um, I think I have it right here. Um, those things on the wall are actually these uh, really great uh, holders. They're magnetic. So they go really well on a fridge or a file cabinet, but they open up. So I'm hoping to swap out the pictures at some point uh, that are, and I will be lining those pictures up much more, much better than they are now. Um, but uh, again, Tanner, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for that great discussion about the year in, in pictures. Uh, it was in print on January 1st, but we were thrilled to be able to have you join us uh, our, for our first show of 2023 uh, to go over the, uh, the details. Thank you so much for having me, Neil. It's been a real pleasure. To, and I could you know, talk about the year in pictures or New York Times photography for, for hours. So I uh, really appreciate you having me on this morning. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we will finish the show again. Uh, folks can uh, find the show on the same links that you're watching now from the very beginning. If you just wait a little bit, you'll be able to watch it from the beginning. Uh, and uh, we appreciate you joining us on uh, your Sunday uh, morning. Uh, a few other comments, uh, again, that came in. Jonathan uh, says, uh, fantastic show. Thank you. My mom says, great show. Uh, Jay checked out my website while we were talking. Uh, thank you, Jay. Appreciate that. And she loves uh, photography. Uh, Miriam says, good advice from uh, Tanner. Jay liked the cat clock. Um, <laughs> so we want to, uh, you got a uh, wall, your wall art is dope uh, from Diana. That's pretty cool. Um, and uh, um, and uh, Jay is asking about the link for the frame. I will uh, certainly share that uh with you offline, Jay. Uh, so again, thank you very much and we'll see you next Sunday.